Now it's time to take a deeper look into IPv6 multicasting. Multicasting is a very important part to how IPv6 operates and works. In this video, we're gonna start out by talking about how multicasting works. Then we're gonna get into some scopes, specifically IP version six scopes. Then we'll get into some multicast address, some specific multicast addresses. And then we'll talk about the solicited node multicast address, a specific uh, type of multicast address. In my last video, we went over the different type of addresses there are. And one of those was the multicast address. And here's the range right here. So we're gonna take a further in-depth look into this, but the range that we have is anywhere from FF00 colon colon to all Fs. All right, so how does multicast work? Well, let's say we wanted to send messages out to just desktops on our network. So I'm gonna circle just the desktops. We wanna send information out to there. We're gonna send information from the server out to those desktops. And so that server is going to send it to the switch and the switch is going to forward it to all devices that are subscribed to that multicast group. So, but the question is, is how does the switch know which ports to send them on? Well, there's a couple different ways to do that. Number one, we can actually get onto the switch and we can assign specific multicast groups onto the switch. So that way it will send out the, whatever frames are destined towards that uh, multicast group, then it will send out to those, those uh, devices that are out on the network. So uh, that is how to manually set it up. But there is also a dynamic that when a machine checks in to this switch, it will actually tell the switch which groups it wants to be a part of. So there's a dynamic way of, of subscribing for these machines to subscribe to that group. And then when that server sends out that data, that switch knows where to send that data too. And if it doesn't know, if it doesn't understand what uh, ports are assigned to that specific multicast group, then it will just broadcast it out to all devices. Let's talk about multicasting scopes. What this represents right here is a, is a multicasting address. And the multicasting addresses all start out, just by definition, all start out with eight bits all being one. And so that is the equivalent to FF. It's the same thing that we saw on that, on that uh, table that we saw right um, a, a slide or two ago. So it starts out with FF. And then the next set of bits, the next four bits are flags. And there are specific flags for things that we want to flag. Now we're not too concerned about this and this at this point. So then we get into the scope and this is what we're gonna be talking about. So the next four bits uh, measures or signifies the scope. And we're gonna talk much more about this scope. And then the last 112 bits just represents the group ID. So these last 112 bits is assigned to some sort of group. So that is the address. And once again, let's get into the scope. The scope is four bits. So we have 16 possibilities, zero through F. Not all of them are defined. Some of them are reserved and some of them we need to be concerned with now. And so I've written down the ones that we need to be concerned with right now. So if there is a one, that means there's a 0001 in this scope field right here, then it is what's called a interface local. It is only local to the machine. If it is a two, that is being a 0010, in these four bits on the scope, then that is a link local. And we know that link local is the local subnet. We, if there is a four in this scope, then that means it is a admin local. If there is a five in the scope, that means it's a site local. If there's an eight, it means it's an organizational local. local. And then if it's an E, 
That means it's a global multicast address. So the global multicast address means that it will go out onto the internet. So there is globally routable, uh, there's globally routable multicast addresses, and they would all start with this E within the scope. Here's another way of stating the same thing. I have this table right here, and if it starts, if a address starts with an FF01, then that is a interface local, and it doesn't leave the local device. It is an interface local. It's local to the interface. If it starts with the FF02, that is a link local, and it doesn't leave the subnet. If it starts with the FF05, it is a site local, and it doesn't leave the local site. And the local site, the difference between a subnet is would be that it's directly in its same uh, subnet there and doesn't leave the layer three device versus a site local would be like a headquarters office. And then you have this FF08, which is a organizational local, which doesn't leave the organization. So it could actually go across WAN lines, but it's still gonna stay within the organization. And then you have an FFOE, which is a global addre address and, or a global multicast address, and there is no boundaries to it. So it can traverse the internet. Let's take this one step further. So interface local, that means this machine right here, if it has a, it is, a multicast address that's an interface local, it only is on that machine, on that direct interface. If it's a link local, right, it is a local to the subnet. So it's, it's a multicast that only is sent to this local network right here. Uh, if it is a site local, so perhaps this is the same building right here. And so everything on this side would be the site local. So multicast addresses could then go beyond this router and perhaps get sent into this area as well, but it maintains on the site. And then you have an organizational local, which would be everything that even if it traverses the WAN, it's still all company resources or all organization resources. And then finally, the global will be able to go outside of the organization. So we've got interface local, link local, site local, organization local, and global. Let's take a look at some specific addresses now. So we, here's a list of different addresses that you will probably see as you advance through this curriculum. And so one thing we see here is that they all start with FF. So immediately we should flag that this is a multicast address. Then all of these start with 02, FF02. That 02 identifies the sc scope. This is not going to go beyond a layer three device. It's going to stay within the subnet, within the LAN. It's going to stay locally. And so then we say, okay, well, who is, what is the groups that are assigned to this? Well, we have a, the group one is all nodes and hosts. Group two is all routers. So all nodes and hosts, that's everything on the network. All routers are uh, just the routers that are on the network. And then if the router is running OSPF, then these might apply to it. If the router is running RIP, then this would apply to it. If the router is running ERGRP, that would apply to it. So these are different groups that devices will subscribe to so they can get information that's being sent out to the group. Uh, now, one thing I wanna point out is this first one, all nodes and hosts. It's interesting. It's all nodes and hosts. Well, that sure sounds like a broadcast. And it essentially is, is a type of broadcast if all nodes and hosts are subscribed to this group specifically. 
So uh, your switch, if any devices and most all most to all of your devices should be subscribed to this group. So when you send something to this group, it's actually going to reach all of the nodes. And then we uh, see that the all routers here, that's gonna be all the routers that are gonna subscribe to that. So these are the two that we really are going to hit on hard with this video and the next few videos. We're gonna be talking a lot about things that are broadcasted or I shouldn't use the term broadcast. It is a multicast. You still have to subscribe to that group in order to get those advertisements, in order to get those uh, messages that are being sent to the group. So, but we are going to be dealing with the all nodes ho and hosts, and we'll be dealing with the router, the uh, the all the devices that the routers are going to subscribe to. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out with this is that I also added the MAC addresses. And I added the MAC addresses here because there's always an association between the IP address and the MAC address. And the reason why that has to be is because these what they're what the switch is making a determine on which device is going to get get this information, which device is going to get the packets and the frames that are being sent to this group. And so because the switch is a layer two device and it's making these decisions, it makes the decision at the frame level. And so it needs to be able to see the MAC address reflect whatever multicast group it's a part of. You can see that these multicast groups start with 3.3 and then they end with the group number on here. And so that is the uh, multicast group there. And just know that that's how the switch determines what ports it's going to forward the frame off to so that it can get it to these different devices. Okay, let's look at a specific example. This is a FF02. So we know that it's multicast because it begins with FF. We know the scope is going to stay within the subnet and so let's say uh, we have this range right here it's got two routers that are servicing it and it's got a couple switches and it's got a lot of devices that are hanging off of it and this computer right here wants to ask a question of the routers and so what would it be is it'd be sending a message to ff02 colon colon two that switch gets it and realizes that it's has a, a device, this router right here, that's subscribed to that group on a port and will forward it out there. And then this switch also knows that there is a device that's associated with that group on it and lets this switch know. So this switch knows it needs to forward it out that and this switch knows it needs to forward out that port. And so now both of these routers will get the advertisement to FF02 colon colon two. So we'll actually see how this works with Na neighbor discovery protocol for these routers to actually reply and say, yeah, I am a way out. You can use me as a default gateway. So that's one example. Another example is we've got these routers that are communicating with each other and maybe they need to pass off certain information with each other. So this router right here and this router right here can send out advertisements to each other so that way and, and, and messages to each other so that way they can start that communication and get that communication flowing. But remember, uh, this whatever is sent out, this link right here is going to stay on that link right there. It's not gonna go beyond those routers. Whatever is sent out, this link is gonna stay on this link right here. It's not gonna go beyond those routers. Same thing with this link right here. So uh, this, this particular one, FF02 colon colon two, will be used to go from your machines to your routers and will be used between routers and routers. There is one very unique multicast group and that is called the Solicited Node Multicast Group. So the address for the Solicited Node Multicast Group is FF02 colon colon one colon FF and then a series of bits. And these series of bits are going to represent the host. It's going to be unique to the host. And so the, the group that's going to be involved in this multicast group is going to be the multicast group of one. 
It's going to be just a single device. And uh, the, your device has this. What it does is it takes the link local address and then it uses the last part of the link local address to populate the rest of the list solicited node multicast group. And then it can use this uh, to send multicast messages out. And so uh, we're, and that's part of the neighbor discovery process. So they will talk about neighbor discovery protocol here in a second, but just know that the solicited, at this point, just know that solicited node multicast is one of the uh, addresses that are gonna be assigned, multicast addresses that are gonna be assigned on, one, on your machine. And there's going to be a correlation between that and your link local address and neighbor discovery protocol uses that. Multicasting is pretty cool stuff and it's really necessary for IP version six. So we went over a lot of the concepts starting from what is multicasting and how does it work? We got into the scopes and what the scopes are, how, how far those multicasts will be sent within your networks. And then we talked about multicast addresses and what those multicast addresses look like. And we finished it up with talking about the solicited node multicast address, which we'll be talking later about when we get into the neighbor discovery protocol. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, could you hit that like button?